Break your Bible open with me to the book of Jeremiah chapter 16 from verse 1 to 11. We are going to be reading from verse 1 to 3 and then we jump to verse 11. Hallelujah. Amen. We'll be reading from verse 1 to 4 rather and we jump to verse 11. If you are there, shout the louder hallelujah. hallelujah. Let us read today. The Bible said that the Lord, the word of the Lord came also unto me, saying, Thou shalt not take thee a wife, neither shalt thou have sons or daughters in this place. For thus says the Lord, consigning the sons and consigning the daughters that are born in this place. Consigning their mothers that bear them, and consigning their fathers that begot them in this land. Verse 4. They shall die of grievous death. They shall not be lamented, neither shall they be buried. But there shall be a dawn upon the face of the earth, and they shall be consumed by the sword, and by famine. And their carcass shall be meat for the foes of heaven and for the beasts of the earth. Let us jump to verse 11 and see why. Verse 11. Then shall they say unto them, Because your fathers have forsaken me, says the Lord, and have walked, and have walked after other gods, and have served them, and have worshipped them, and have forsaken me. And have not kept my law, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Make yourself comfortable in the presence of the Lord. Friends, I want us to understand that in a congregation of 10, 20, 20 thousands of people, when two or three people receive and others are not receiving the same congregation, it's because the borders of your heart are not open. It is not because the grace that was released from God is not sufficient enough to carry everybody, but because when your, the borders of your heart is not open, the Spirit of God cannot find expression in you. For the Spirit of God to find expression in the life of any individual or a people, the borders of your heart must be open. And I want us to understand that as beautiful as the building may be, as beautiful and tall as any building may be, if the foundation of that building is not solid, there is 99% that the building will collapse. Therefore, as many as of us that are seated here today, as many and beautiful as we are, if the foundations of our life, the foundation of our father's and mother's house, are not well and great in the solid rock that is of God, of the Lord Jesus, there is possibility that you may fail. Hallelujah. The song we sang says, there is something that brought me into the presence of God. As many as we are seated here, many things are going through our mind. One thing or the other that we have been asking God for, some God has answered them already, some is yet to answer. But today, as you have come into the presence of God, I see God answering everyone that is impending in your life. Oh, 
take it away from them. Not because they have done anything wrong. It is not the fault of the lady who was supposed to marry to Jeremiah. It is not her fault that she is not being tossed. But her great grandfather, her great grandmother had turned away from God. And that has brought causes upon her. It is not her pride to be celebrated. But something is happening against her not to be celebrated. Just because of her great grandfather. I don't know who among us is sitting here today. That something is happening against us to enter into our place of destiny. I don't know who among us is sitting here today. That is about to achieve something. But as any time you try to achieve this thing. You see something standing as pillar. You see something crying against you. You see yourself making love in the realm of the spirit. And when you wake up you see that thing being punished. Today I come before you. As a servant of the most high. And I declare that the day. By the hand that rest Christ from the grave. Anything working against any one of us here today. By the power of the Holy Ghost. I command them to stop. In the name. Why will the father commit sin and the son suffer for it? If my father committed sin, he should be punished for it. If my mother committed sin, my mother should be punished for it, not me. But the Bible said, because they worship other gods, therefore that brought cause against them. Many of us have suffered so much. In our place of all, it's not because we are not qualified to obtain that level. In our place of all, it's not because we are not qualified to get to that place. But at any time when there is an opening for promotion in your place of work, instead of them to promote you to that place where you are supposed to be, they bring somebody that is not even qualified and make that person head over you. That is because there is a foundation that is still speaking. At any time when you are close to something, you are very close to it. You see yourself losing it. Not because you have not worked for it, but because there is a mountain standing toward the foundation. Today, that foundation will go down in the name of Jesus. I shall be talking today on what I titled The Effect of Evil Foundation. Understanding the effect of evil foundation. How do I know? If an evil foundation is working against me, how do I know if a foundation is speaking against me? The effect of evil foundation. In the book of Genesis, chapter 3, if you read from verse 6, there was a transaction in the realm of the spirit between Eve and the devil. And this transaction brought about death foundation in the life of everyone sitting here today. In the beginning of time when God created man, the Bible said that God created man in his own image and likeness. And the Bible said, let them be like us. Let them be like me. Therefore, the plans of God for man was that man should not die. It is not because man was supposed to die. The original plan of God, man was not supposed to die. But that transaction that took place in the realm of the spirit brought about death in the life of individual. When they He said, but I am come that you may have life and have it in abundance. Who is the enemy? He is the devil. That same devil who did a transaction in the garden of Eden with Eve that brought about death, that brought about sorrow. If you go to verse 16 of Genesis chapter 3, we are meant to understand that God laid a curse on man and he said unto them, Up to this day shall you labor before you eat. He said, You will eat from this ground and you will Let's <laughs> go. 
was subject to death because of the transaction in the realm of the spirit. And man was cast out of the garden of Eden. And man began to suffer. And man was subject to death. And woman labored before they could not eat. I don't know who among us has seated here today. That our great grandfather, our great grandmother, had entered any transaction in the realm of the spirit. That has spoken anything in the realm of the spirit. Or worship any idol in the realm of the spirit. That has not brought death in our life. That has gone to any idol to say, Give me power to protect my children, to protect my great grandchildren. Or my people that is having a transaction in the realm of the spirit that is going to affect the children later. Because God hates any man who will worship idol. My God is a jealous God. When God creates you, His plans and purpose is for you to have communion with Him. That is why at any time, in the morning of the time, the God of heaven will walk into the garden and begin to communion with man. But when man sinned against God, when God got there, man was no longer there. His plans and purpose is for you to have a communion relationship with Him. But that can no longer happen. Because there was a transaction. I don't know who has made any evil transaction. Who has gone to anywhere to take any power in your foundation, in your mother's house, in your father's house that has not angered God. And God has laid fire on you and laid fire on your foundation. That at any time you struggle, at any time you work hard, but nothing to show for it. There are men among us, there are women among us. We are due for marriage. Why are we not married? It's not because we are not. Oh, 
He left with his two wives, Leah and Rachel. The Bible said while they were leaving the house, Rachel took the cause of her father. And when they began to realize that my cause is no longer here, he went after Jacob. And when he got to the place where Jacob was, he said, why have you stolen from me? And Jacob said, I have never taken anything from you. He said, no, you have taken something from me that is so precious to me. Because he believed in his gods. Whatever you believe in is best known to you. And then he said, no problem. If you find your gods, whoever you find your gods with, let that person that a cause was pronounced out of mistake. Because he believed that no one took it. If I, who is the stranger, have not taken from you, then I believe that your daughters will not stay from you. The Bible says when Laban began to search everywhere, the doctor sat on it. And when he sat around and he could not find it, the Bible says when he was to leave, Jacob was very angry and said, Why have you accused me? I have served you faithfully, but you accused me. Was he accusing him? No. One of his wives has told that cause. And the wife sat on it. Instead of the wife to stand up and embrace the father, the wife said, Father, I cannot embrace you. I cannot come to welcome you because I am on my monthly circle. And the father allowed her, and then the father left. And this lady took this gods with her. And when he got to that Genesis, chapter 35, the Bible explained to us that when it was not time for her to give birth, because a pronouncement was made that whoever that took this gods shall die, when it was not time for her to give birth, to bear the the Bible said on the process of giving birth, she died. But before she died, she called a child born envy. And that means a child of my sorrow. But the understanding of the father, the father said, no, this child will not be called that name. He shall be called Benjamin, a child of my right hand. Because if he had not reversed it, that will work again. And that is a cause. And God hates anyone who will serve a cause. When you took it from him, what are you using it for? She is going to serve it. And God don't want anything that will contradict the worship of Jacob in his house. Therefore, God needs to kill her so that that will not come to pass. Because if God had allowed her and she started worshiping it, perhaps the woman has capacity. She will convert her husband. And that generation that is supposed to come, the generation of Abraham, that God promised him and said that we bring a new generation that is supposed to come, that generation of Israel would not have come because they would have watched idol and God would have been angry with them and then God would turn back again. So because God knew it and God wanted to stop it, he killed her and the Bible says she died because the foundation began to speak against her and that foundation is the foundation of a God that she stole. I don't know where you have made any mistake or who in your family have made Mistakenly, because he never believed that anyone has done anything. Perhaps you have done something very little to your father. Perhaps you have told it a little thing from your mother, and they have asked you several occasions. You refuse to say it is me, and your father told somebody outside has taken it, and the father pronounced the word and pronounced this word, and this word is now working against you, standing as foundation. Today, I come to announce to somebody that has been speaking against you. I come to speak on your own. That everything that was speaking against you, by the reason in the name of Jesus, today I cancel them. I silence them by the name of Jesus. A foundation can stop a man, and a foundation can make a man. When your foundation is built on a solid rock, it has the capacity to make you. When a foundation is built on idol, there is 99% that you may not make it on earth, even in the world after. Because no one worship idol will see the kingdom of our God. So if it speaks against you here on earth, and you are not succeeding here on earth, then there is possibility that even the world after, you will still suffer because the foundation is put against you and you were not able to break it. We must come to a point where we realize that foundation in every family that comes from Africa, as we say, you may say your father is a Christian, your mother is a Christian. What about your great grandfather, your great grandmother? Before religion of Christianity came into Africa, all the Africans were worshiping 
idol. So every house in Africa has crossing idol one way or the other. And perhaps God was under the death since that generation. And no one has stand up in that family to break it there. And that is why it's still manifesting. Even though your father has become a Christian, even though your mother has become a Christian, but they do not understand that something is speaking against them. And they are just worshiping God and going there. You can still be going to church. You can still be worshiping God. And the foundation is still working against you. Until you come to a point where you now realize that foundation is speaking there. And you enter into a place of prayer. You enter into a place of communication. Into a place of consultation. A place where you come on and have interaction in the realm of the spirit with God Almighty Jehovah. And then God Himself come down to help you and pray that foundation. Then your suffering will end. But if you don't know, you may suffer for the rest of your life. And when the purpose of life is not well understood, life ends with regret. When the purpose of life is not well understood, life is lived like nothing. Because life is temporary and we don't have the whole time. So we must find out early enough to do what is of us and is needed for us to break out of those foundations. And I see somebody under the sound of my voice today breaking out of that foundation in the name of Jesus. In the book of First Chronicles, chapter 4, from verse 9 and 10. The Bible told us about a woman who was to give birth. There was no name mentioned. Nothing about her was stated. The story just ended very short. A woman who was supposed to give birth. And the Bible said, because she has suffered in sorrow. And then when she brought the child, when she finally gave birth, because of that of sorrow, out of pain, we don't know whether the man impregnated her and abandoned her. We don't know whether she suffered all the rest of her life in sickness during the time of this pregnancy. We don't know whether it was hunger. Because when the woman is pregnant, they needed food at any time. Maybe there was no one there to cater for. Maybe the husband was not there for her. And she brought this child in her womb out from pain and sorrow and hunger. And when she was about to give birth, she gave birth to a male child that she was supposed to celebrate and said, This child will be great after me. But instead, this woman called this child Jabez. And Jabez grew up. And when Jabez grew up, the purpose of Jabez, why God brought Jabez, was for him to be more honorable than all his brothers. But it's not coming true. At any time Jabez struggled, nothing come out of it. At any time he walked, no money to appreciate it. He helped people, nobody appreciated him. And then Jabez went back to his dwelling body and said, This is not ordinary. I can send something wrong with me. And Jabez consulted God. And the Bible said, when Jabez began to cry to the God of heaven, when he cried and cried, the Bible said that God heard his prayer and break him out of that foundation of a cause of a name that was given to him by his own biological mother. And when he was broken out of that cause, the Bible said he was honorable. When I can tell you all the way, again to another story, in the book of Judges, the Bible told us in Judges chapter 6, from verse 1, a man told Gideon, he was supposed to be a deliverer of a nation. He is not just a deliverer of his father's house, neither his city, but a nation. The Bible says it was not coming because the foundation of an altar of his father's house is speaking against him. And the Bible told us that when God encountered him, when he encountered a deity, a higher deity that is called Jehovah, when he encountered a man that is called God Almighty, the Bible tells the telling his story and he became a deliverer, not just his father's house, not just his mother's children, but a deliverer of a nation, a cause that was there. If you read Judges chapter 2, from verse 19 and 20, the Bible said, and when the Israelites sinned against God, he said God was angry with them by them worshiping another idol. God was angry with them, and the Bible said, and God called them and said, I am going to give you out for slavery. And if you go to that Judges 6, the Bible said, the Lord gave them out for slavery for seven years to the Midianites, and they suffered. The Bible said, at any time when they gathered, at any time they planned their crops, at any time it's supposed to be harvested, they will come and destroy it like the locusts. At any time their crop has grown, that they are supposed to enjoy the fruit of their level, an enemy will come and destroy it because of the foundation of an idol that is speaking against him. But when he realized, the Bible said, and when he brought the altar, the idols of his father's house, and instituted an altar, he brought a new altar for Jehovah. The Bible said, a new altar began to speak for him, and he was brought. 
He got the mighty man that was supposed to be originally. He attained his level in destiny because he knew it and tried against it early. But what about if you don't know? Even though he's supposed to be a deliverer, even though he's supposed to be mighty, even though he's supposed to be that man, it is not coming. Why? Because he has not realized it. Not because he did not know God. No. As a matter of fact, he was the only man that was even serving God among others faithfully. But yet, he is not what God wanted to be until he cried to God. And God heard him and answered him. We are going to pray today against any altars or foundation that is speaking against us. And by the wisdom of the Holy Ghost and the hand that raised Christ from the grave and that hand that passed the red seed and that hand that brought down the Jericho. We are going to pray to God today. And I will see God. I am seeing God helping people, breaking people out of shadows. I'm seeing God bringing people out of that foundation. I'm seeing God bringing people. As far as you open the borders of your heart today, for the Spirit of God to find expression, I see God manifesting Himself in your life, in your destiny, in your family, in the name of Jesus. We started very late. I might not be able to touch all, but we are going to touch a little before I go. Hallelujah. Yeah. Is somebody blessed in the house? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. The Lord will answer all of us today in the name of Jesus. Yeah. The Bible says, it does say, Joshua chapter 6. The Bible said, and Joshua made a pronouncement after they had went round the Jericho and the wall came down. Why did the wall came down? The Bible said when the Israelites left and they were joining them to Jericho. When the people of Jericho saw them coming from afar, they shut their gate. Why? Because they believe in their gates. They believe in the fairness of their foundation. They believe that nobody can climb into that foundation because their foundation was actually giant. And they stood by it. And they said, No man go out, neither will any man come out. But there is a touch in the realm of the spirit. There is something in the realm of the spirit that is higher than Buddhism. There is something in the realm of the spirit that is higher than Caterpillar. And when you apply that in the realm of the spirit, things begin to work for you. And God spoke unto Joshua. He said, I have promised you already, just as I promised Moses before he died. I have promised you also that I will take them in through you. So nothing will stop me. Nothing war will stop me. He said, go around it with your people. Go around it for seven days. Don't worry about how they laugh at you. Perhaps when they are going around it, the people go upstairs and see them and laugh at them. I say, what are those stupid people doing? How can they only see it and go around it and think that we can open this gate? If you like, stay there for one year. If you like, stay there for ten years. We are not going to open this gate. That is their own thinking. But there is a technology in the realm of the spirit that has been activated and that technology is going to shock them. And when they went through it for seven days, the Bible said, and the Lord speak unto Joshua, said unto your men, shout today. And the moment they shouted, the war came down. And the Bible said, when that war came down, and the Israelites took over, the Bible said, and Joshua made a pronouncement. He said, any man that we ever want to raise this up, any man that we ever want to raise this gate, he said, he can raise the gate with his first son, and he shall finish with his last son, and that brought us to the book of First King, chapter 16, from verse 34. The Bible said, When the man came again to raise this place, he raised the city with his first son, and when he went to finish it, he sacrificed his last son because there was a pronouncement in the realm of the spirit. I don't know what has been spoken over your family, I don't know what has been spoken over your life that is not having equal effect over you, that is standing as a blockade. That is standing as a barrier, but there is a technology in the realm of the spirit that has been activated, that has been released by our God to break that altar, to break that foundation. And as you dig in today, opening your heart to God today, I see God bringing them down in the name of Jesus. The Lord will bring down every foundation that is not of Him today in the name of Jesus. Men can speak. The problem we Christians or believers have is 
that we don't take God serious as men of the other world do. If a man go to a herbalist and he needed money, and the herbalist said, You must come to me every 12 midnight and make a sacrifice naked at this junction for one year, that man will not go one minute after. They would rather be dead before that 12. And then if they don't care whether someone is passing or not, they will be naked. Just because they want to maintain that level which the man has instructed. But God has said to us, come to me. Come to me and I will make you. But we Christians are sleeping because we believe that grace will speak. There is a time when grace expires. I want us to understand that grace don't last in the life of a people forever. Grace expires. I have worked with a man of God. He's a very genuine man of God, very good man of God from the beginning. He was very known. He was very rich. He was manifesting the manifestation of God that was on him. He was an express of what God said, go and deliver, go and multiply. But then he came to a point where he began to sin against God by lying, begin to sin against God by sleeping with women. He began to sin against God. And when God warned him several occasions, he refused to listen to God. And then came a time. Then when he continued with this attitude, the Lord left him. But the gift is still with him. The Lord did not take gift away from him. He can still see. He can still tell you your problem. But the one backing the problem, the one giving power for the problem to be solved is no longer there. So he can only tell you what your problems are. He can only see your yesterday, see your tomorrow, and tell you because the gift is still there. But God is no longer with him. That is because grace has fire. And grace has left him. For years, grace has left him. He is just there, bearing the crown of yesterday. He is just bearing the name of yesterday, deceiving people. And many people are still going to him because he's calling names. Many people are still going to him because he's telling you for your bank account. Many people are still going to him because he can stand here and tell you what your mother is doing and tell you what your father is doing. And people still believe that he's still of God. But he's no longer of God because grace has been taken. But the gift was not taken. That is how a lot of us have been deceived in one way or the other by so many of those pastors. That is why I tell people do not trust me, do not believe in me, believe in the one that called me, put your trust in the one that called me, so that when you come before him, even if I am not here, if another person is here, you can still receive from God because the God that is here will never be taken away. Even if I am taken away, the God will. Jesus with all your heart 
opening your heart for the Spirit of God to find expression in you, confessing and bidding Him your Savior, then you shall be saved. The Bible says in John 1, verse 12, it says, As many as received Him, to them give Him the power to be called the sons of God. So you must believe in Him. When you have confessed Him that is the Son of God, believe that God raised Him from the dead, you must believe with all your heart in Him. Put all your heart and your trust in Him and allow the government of God to work in you and allow the expressions of the Spirit of God to find a place in your heart. And you must allow God to set the altars of your heart and the borders of your heart, the tabernacles of your heart on fire for Him. You must give up to your will and allow the will of God to take place. And allow the light of God to shine in you. Because God cannot be found in a place that is dark. Because God is light. The Bible says in Isaiah 60 verse 1, it says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of God is risen upon you. For the glory of God to be risen upon any man, for you to break that evil foundation, the light of God will first come. And that is why the Bible told us in the book of Matthew, chapter 15, Chapter 5 from verse 15 and 16, the Bible said, He said, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good work and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So the light of God that is in you that men see is what they call your work. Your work is not just going around it. You can be going around and your life is not the expression of Jesus. Until your life becomes an expression of Jesus to the light of God in you, then the glory of God return to God. The third thing is you must run to the name of the Lord and our Savior and Master, Jesus Christ. Proverbs 18, verse 10. The Bible says the name of the Lord is our strong tower. The righteous run into and they are saved. It's not everyone running to, but the righteous, the chosen one, the one that have been given the sons and daughters of our Lord, and the one that run to and they are saved. If it were to be everyone, the moment you get to church and then you give your life to Christ, the foundation is supposed to be broken. But until you come to a place of that place where God can see you as righteous, then the foundation can be broken. The Bible said in the book of Psalm 20, from verse 7, it's even the trust in chariots, so people trust in horses. But we trust in the name of the Lord our God. The name of the Lord is our strong tool. Hallelujah. Amen. Today, if there be anything that has been struggling in your life, any foundation, any sacrifice that was made on any foundation, any sacrifice, anyone that was buried in your foundation, anyone that was buried, maybe your great grandfather had buried someone, he has a result of their sacrifice, buried someone alive. And on the process of that, by the person made a pronouncement, or the person speak against your generation, and you come from that village, and today you are suffering for no reason. I see God of heaven. As you open your heart today, I see Jehovah. As you open the borders of your heart, I see the Spirit of God. As you open yourself today, I see Jehovah destroying that foundation and silencing those voices in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Friends, brothers, and sisters, I want us to know that Jesus is coming very soon. He said, I stand at the door of your heart and I knock. If any man should hear my voice and open, I will come. Jesus is knocking today at the tabernacles of our heart, the borders of our heart. Jesus wants to come in. If you open today, the Spirit of God will find expression in you. Can we rise up to our feet?